Bob and Doris Hart had lived in the same house in the suburbs of Indianapolis, Indiana, for 12 years. Each day usually began with the same comfortable routine. But on the morning of March 28, 1991, their lives took an unexpected and shocking turn. Approximately 7, 10 in the morning. Mrs. Hart was upstairs in the shower. Okay, okay, I'm coming. Hi, hey, what's happening? Good morning, sir. Is David home? No. Mr. Hart advised Dave doesn't live here anymore. He had a cap on it said police. Um, think I could use the phone? Sure, go on in. No All problem. Right. Be quiet. Be quiet. Hey, there's nobody here but me. Nobody here. Nobody here. Nobody here but me and my wife. Don't hurt anybody. Don't hurt either one. Nine one one. What emergency are you reporting? You know, someone's downstairs with my husband, and it. I heard him holler, "Don't hurt me and Doris." Please get somebody. Okay, ma'am, stay on the line with me. Do you have any idea who it is? Please hurry. Up. Okay, we will. We'll be in route. Stay on the line with me. Well, well okay, we'll, we'll, get, we'll, 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 we'll give you some money. Back up. We'll give you some Shut money. Up. Don't Back up. Up. You don't have any idea who it is? No. Okay, do you know Stop. if there's... Who is... No. no. Oh, he's taking the door down. The police is on the way. He's what? was transferred to Marion County Sheriff's Dispatcher Michael Day. I've had residence robberies where the people have already been gone, but never while it's actually still going on in the residence. When Deputy Ted Cassidy heard about the intruder, he was just seven blocks from the scene. As I got to about 82nd Street on Meridian, dispatch hit me back again and said uh, that they'd just received a panic alarm from that same residence. At that time, I shut down all my siren and my red lights, and I started looking for numbers on the mailbox. When the car came right across in front of me, the thought ran through my mind, I'm at the right place at the right time. Yeah, I think you're going to run from me. He is. 10-4. We're eastbound on 82nd Street. We disregarded all stop signs. He had no intentions of stopping for anything. We're still eastbound. I was trying to find out the direction they were going so I could have other cars I and mean, try to get a route for them to go. I'd be a fool if I didn't say I wasn't scared. You can be killed in a car crash just as easy as you can be shot. I was scared, scared to death. Probably 65 mile an hour. Southbound on Whitcomb. 136-180. The gentlemen in the car were lost. They had no idea where they were going. I really believe that if he had have known where he was going, we would have probably been going faster than we were. I've never seen anybody jump from a moving car like that, except on TV. 
and they can do anything with TV. Can you copy, Blake? Go ahead. 49, H. Henry, 2694. 104. This is a school day. We have children standing out on the streets waiting for the bus. That was my biggest fear through the whole chase was that one of these kids was going to step out into the roadway and get hit by him. On college, north now. I saw one of our cars coming southbound on college. While the first suspect was being positively identified, the search for the second suspect intensified. We had a white male, blue jean jacket, camouflage pants, bail out on us. He may be 1032, use extreme caution. The Indianapolis police were also alerted to be on the lookout for the suspect. <laughs> Sheriff's Department canine units combed the neighborhood where the suspect had last been seen. A radio traffic reporter heard about the search on his scanner and broadcast a description of the man. What we're looking for is a white male about 5'11 with brown hair, a blue jean jacket and camouflage pants who bailed out of a car that was being pursued by the police following uh, an attempted residence robbery. If you see anyone suspicious, do call the Marion County Sheriff's Department. There's a canine unit in the area looking, and of course we're overhead as well. So we'll keep you advised about this, but this one subject is still at large. Back in a couple of things, John Gillis, WIBC, Air Traffic Control. When we continue. Yeah, we had a report about a uh, white male that looked pretty suspicious. Where's he at? I mean, it's an emergency. I've got to know where he's going. 